Well, in 1975, the Bulls lost to the Golden State Warriors in six gut-wrenching games in the Western Conference Finals. Now, two of the stars on that team were the Storm and Butterbean Bob Love. Now, 25 years later, both men now make their living with their words. Now, for Norm, as you can tell, the move was a natural one, but for Love, the transition was harder. Harder than probably anything he did on the court. Now, Full Access host Tom Waddle brings us up to date with Bob Love's inspirational story. In the early days of Bulls basketball, before there was Michael, ruled a man called Butterbean. From 1968 to 1976, Bob Love was a shining star on the west side, the cornerstone of some dominating Bulls teams. But while Bob was a force on the hardwood, off the court, it was a different story. Most people knew me as a pretty good basketball player during the time I was playing, but very few people knew I stuttered. And, I, in, and in the 800 games that I played for the Chicago Bulls, uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe 90, 95 percent of the time, I was either the leading scorer, the leading rebounder, or the leading assist guy. But you know, I was never once, I was never once voted the star of the game. I was, I was, I was never, I was never interviewed on radio or TV to any length. A source of embarrassment, Bob Stutter literally kept him silent his entire career. But at age 46, Bob finally confronted his disability and went to a speech therapist for the first time. Now today, after years of hard work, Bob is the Bulls' Director of Community Relations, serving as the team's goodwill ambassador and speaking freely at functions throughout the region. More so, he's recently written two books on his experience, one for adults, one for children hopes of using his story to help others. Out of all the handicaps a person can have, I really think, I really think the inability to to uh, communicate is one of the most devastating things that can happen to you. It can be devastating because people tend to think that you're not as smart as other people, that you're dumb, so, you know, but it has nothing to do with that, but the fact that you have a handicap. A lot of people, a lot of people have problems, you know, you know uh, a lot of young people, a lot of old, you know, older people and stuff too. And, and, and I just want everybody to know that, that there are, are no perfect people in the world. Everybody has a handicap. Every, everybody has a disability. It may not be the same problem, but uh, but it's a problem and stuff. You know, and and I just want you know I just want everybody to know that if they hold on to their dreams, ah, uh, long enough, long enough, and never, 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 never turn around and stuff. You know, the dreams are gonna come true one day and stuff. You know, uh, um. I had to wait over 45, 46 years before I was able to. I was able to stand up to a microphone, be interviewed on the radio, or TV, and stuff. You know, but I, I, I always had those dreams, and now I can do it. Now, before there was Michael Jordan at the United Center and at the Chicago Stadium, it was Bob Love's turf. Of course, Bob having one of the three retired jerseys up at the United Center: Jerry Sloan, Michael Jordan. And number 10 for Butterbean, Bob Love. Norm, you played with him for a number of years. When you were on the team with him in the locker room, on the, on the buses, on the planes, all that kind of stuff, how did you communicate with Bob? Well, especially in the locker room, uh, not to uh, come off in a funny way, uh, 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 I talked for him. I really did. I made him. I cussed the Dick Mata, cussed back. Well, Bob means this, you know, yeah. things like that. But I was very quiet. Never really knew there was a problem with that until after ball we both lived in the Seattle area at the time, and that's where I think all this was discovered and the hard times took place. So I'm being one that really didn't know there was a big problem until all this came out. Because you just kind of, as his teammate, you went along with it, not really going home with him, being out in other areas with him to realize how much of a problem it was. You just played ball and, and you got along, and I think just, it's funny with sports. Sometimes, like Jerry Sloan and I, being in the same backcourt, we just looked at each other and knew what to do. Mm -hmm. knew how to do it. That's being together a number of years. And that's the same thing with Bob Love. On and off the court, basically, that's what happened. But as time went on, I guess you go your separate ways, and every, like he said, people have their problems. And this was one that was devastating that I, I honestly didn't know about Bob Love. We lived in the same city at the time. Well, and Norm, like you said before, when he was a player, Never met a shot he didn't like, huh? He liked all the shots. He was good for a man like you. It could he be will fire man. the ball. Give me the ball. That's or we're getting ready for Bulls basketball at the bottom of the hour. The starting lineups are in. B.J. Armstrong getting the nod for the first time in a while. Yeah, he does.